Hello and welcome back to Diving Deep with Deepak and Dara, where we make the deep relatable and translatable for you in your life quickly, typically in five minutes or less. Deepak, my question for you today is, please explain effortlessness. Well, if you want to, eff uh, if you want to understand effortlessness, then look at nature. Right now, you're not doing anything effortfully to make your heart beat or to regulate your blood pressure or to fine tune your immune system or to digest food. Okay, so nature is already working with a principle which we can say um, in one phrase, economy of expenditure of energy. And that's true wherever you look at a biological cell or your biological organism or a bird effortlessly soaring in the sky or a child developing spontaneously into a toddler and puberty and adolescence and adulthood. Nature doesn't have this principle for, of effort. That comes when we are not in touch with ourselves, when we intellectualize and also we separate ourselves from that which we see. You know, this is a human construct. This whole ego identity is a human construct. It's an imposed construct. You're born into this and you're born into an interpreted world. And then you get screwed. Thank you for stopping because I actually forgot to run our timer on that one. Okay, there you are. Yeah, we'll just go with you got it right at the buzzer. So I love that. It's if we can look around at us, everyone has the opportunity to look at nature and see how nature effortlessly grows and produces and goes through seasons and cycles. And you can see it in your own biology as well. I think that that is really beautiful. Now talk about effortlessness as it relates to work or success or more tangibly within your life. It's a process because in our culture, in the world culture right now, hard work, exacting plans, driving ambition, effort are all the means to success and so that's the that's the social hypnosis that we are born into and so it's a process of unlearning and reflecting and if you understand by the way and this is something that meditators do understand if they're uh, if they're uh, regular in their practice that the more you get in touch with your deeper self, which is not your ego, body, mind, identity, but the source of it, you know, what in spiritual traditions is called the soul or core being, then it already comes with a software called memory, desire, and karma. So now these are things that are not easy to explain in five minutes, but karma is any experience and interpretation of any experience that then creates a, a memory and that memory becomes the seed of desire. So inherent in having the desire is the software to fulfill that desire once you understand this. And what I do personally is instead of telling myself I want this, I precede my meditation by asking, what do I really want? And then I wait for any sensation, image, feeling, or thought to come that gives me a clue. And then I let it go. And then I just go into the deeper domain of silence. And then the universe organizes and fulfills the details, sometimes in the form of Dara Brucey or whatever, because you are the universe right now that is organizing these details that uh, hopefully help us both. Uh, so that's become a habit of mine. You know, I go with the flow and I do know at a deeper level what I want. It's called subtle intention, not intention that's forced. So when intention is forced, you know it's not you, it's your mind. Okay, and it's also the expectations of the world. Um, but if intention is very subtle, and the best way to ask them, uh, to know what your intention is to ask the question, because nature never reveals herself to us as she is. She only reveals herself to us um, in the way we ask 
questions of her. So uh, think of nature, the universe, higher consciousness, God, non-local being, whatever, as the infinite organizer that's already orchestrating all the activity of the universe and have a conversation with that entity in the form of asking questions, not in the form of imposing your will on the bigger mind, which is actually your mind. You know, it's, it's the same mind before it was bamboozled into a construct called I am Deepak Chopra. So there's a few things I want to add to that. One is that I'm a believer, and it sounds like you're saying the same thing, that if you have the true desire, it means it's already within you to achieve it. Correct. For anyone who is watching this who feels like, I have these desires and I'm forcing them, it feels so laborious to get there, Listen to what we're saying, that when you, are, when you have that true knowing and that true desire, it's already within you. So it's a matter of cultivating the soil for that to become available. And in some way, very Buddhist principle, release the expectation of the way that it releases and becomes in the world. Second, something that you said that I have a framework for myself around is this idea of where do I feel like I'm effortlessly going with the current and where do I feel like I'm swimming upstream? And if I feel that I'm swimming upstream, then that is a signal and a cue for me that I'm doing something wrong and something is off and to get back with the current. So I hope that might be a helpful tool for others. And then lastly, Deepak, I wanna share a little bit with our viewers about how even this came about. Because this was such an effortless thing that I think from a watching perspective, people might think, well, who is this woman and how did she end up with Deepak? And beyond that, it probably took so much for them to coordinate and make this happen when really, all it took was me following my intuition that said to me, the day after Christmas, I want to follow up with Deepak and express my gratitude and the reflections I've been having for our interactions over the past year. And almost immediately, you wrote me back and you said your reflections and we ping ponged back and forth for maybe 15 minutes over email while we discussed that this was a desire of yours and that I wanted to help you bring this to life. And here we are, less than two weeks later, sharing this with the world. So effortlessness really is real, and it's actually really fun. <laughs> it feels really great to be effortless. So that's beautifully said, and this is still evolving. We don't have any idea uh, where this might go. And one more thing I want to remind you is, if you're using effort, your body will tell you, okay? So anytime you're making a decision that is effortful, there's some discomfort in your body. And these days, especially when uh, people are so practicing mindfulness, etc. if there is one thing I can advise in this area, is feel your body. Your body is a reflection of your inner genius that mirrors the wisdom of the universe. And so ask your body, should I do this? Should I do that? And see what comes up in your body. If there is any effort involved then your body will give you a message somewhere or the other this is you know the chakras in indian tradition and yogic tradition they're junction points between consciousness and biology they're telling you everything about your desires and your needs so you know those seven chakras now i'm going over time but those are hierarchies of needs and desires as well so the first chakra is very basic about survival the second is about uh, sexuality and love but mostly about sensual pleasure the third chakra is about uh, stability the fourth is about love compassion joy equanimity the fifth is the uh, intuition and insight and imagination uh, the sixth is our consciousness and the seventh is enlightenment it's much bigger than say Abraham Ma uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs and those are the messages that you're getting from your higher consciousness if you are actually on target. And when people are actually violating the laws of nature, which I should say is through ignorance, not knowing the real laws of nature, then their body will suggest. So right now, most people have a knot in their stomach or an ache in their heart or a bewilderment in their intellect. And that's because they're not in touch with themselves. Listen to your body, feel your body. There you have it, y'all. Listen to your inner GPS, your intuition, your instinct. That is the guide to help you live effortlessly. So we're going to take a right turn and go into our second question for you. And it is, if you weren't in the profession you are now, and I'm also going to revoke the privilege of you being in the medical profession, what would you be doing instead? 
I would be a street poet. That is shocking. <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> well, you know, I'm a big fan of hip hop uh, in the world. <laughs> and as I travel the world, I see that street poets are actually uh, making a difference in the world. If you go to Colombia or any of these Latin American countries where there's a lot of stress or even in the Middle East, you see graffiti with street poetry. And um, I love it. I think uh, poetry heals the wounds that have been imposed by reason, by the intellect. And so, you know, as a child, I was fond of poetry. I could recite all of Shakespeare at one time, all of it, every play, every act, every, every scene. Um, but I also read Indian poets like Tagore and T.S. Eliot. And so I've written four books on poetry and translated some of the mystical poets like um, Tagore and Kabir and Rumi. So at heart, I'm a poet. I have to ask, who was your favorite hip hop artist? <laughs> well, it was Kanye until he uh, created a song. Am I allowed to? Uh, am I allowed to share what the um, what the lyrics were? It's kind of pretty crude. Up to you. <laughs> so one of his latest songs begins with uh, uh, what? Floating in pussy felt like Deepak Chopra. <laughs> oh my gosh! Has has Kanye, to your knowledge, heard you talk about him? Or no, no, no. he comes to the center. He comes to the center with his wife, Kim, and his kid uh, regularly because he's struggling with meditation. And then, of course, I also have a close relationship with 50 Cent, 50 Cent, as they call him, and I taught him how to meditate. So, you know, I'm into the scene. I love this. Deepak has his street cred. If anyone was curious, now we know. And let's hearken back to another episode where I asked you something we'd be surprised to know about you. That one took the cake. So. Thank you, Deepak. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If your mind isn't going in circles right now, then I am shocked. That was wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so much. If you want to learn more, subscribe to our YouTube channels. Please comment. Let us know what you liked, what you learned, and let us know what you'd like to learn from us in the future, and let us know the questions that you have. We have a giveaway for you, which is at lifebydesignsummit.com forward slash Deepak, which is a one hour free virtual class on living a more meaningful life, which comes with a guided meditation from Deepak. And lastly, follow us on Twitter and Instagram to keep up with us on the daily at, at Deepak Chopra and at Dara B. See you next time.